So the Book of Acts gives us the model for reaching the ends of the earth. So I'm in Burma right now. The island of Bali is absolutely spectacular. We are in Cambodia here. This is a beautiful family that lives in a village that we've done distributions with. In the Great Commission, let's remember, Jesus said, go and make disciples of all nations. And for us at World Mission, it's really important that the Word of God be a part of that. I mean, how can you really become a disciple if you don't have access to the Word of God? We are in Kor, the middle of Rendili land, and all these brothers are Rendili pastors. So are you guys happy about these units? Yes. yes. All right. Cambodia is a, an amazing country. It's surrounded by Laos, Vietnam, and Thailand. And the 16 million people that live here, they say about 85% are Buddhists, and many of them have never heard the gospel for the first time. Hello and welcome. It is the Great Commission Update. I am Rusty Humphreys. That guy over there is Greg Kelly, and we sure appreciate you. Um, so a few minutes ago, before the show started, yeah. I, I don't want to say I'm in freak out mode, because I, I don't <laughs> do that often. I am in... We're getting right down to the final moments of getting ready to go on this trip. And I've got too much stuff already. And then yep. your your assistant is this wonderful woman named Liberty. <laughs> yeah. And Liberty yep. says, Hey Rusty, do you mind if we if we send some treasures and you can bring them along? I was like, Well, sure. I'm thinking ten cooperative you don't want to be right i'm thinking 10 15 of them i'll put them in my bag and i'll try to jam them in or something and this (laughs) giant brinks truck load you know the dump truck backs the thing up and you know my whole home now is covered in treasures i don't know how i'm gonna get in there i mean but that's why we're going but it's little things like this, Greg, that's just kind of got me going. Blah, 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 blah. It's going to be good. You know, I mean, just imagine if you were the guy in Nepal who had that same dump truck backing up with. Tra- I mean, you'd be ecstatic. That's good right? for him. That's good for him. That's he just doesn't him. have to carry it to the airport. Now, the double bonus for you is you get to be the one who's delivering it to them and you get to see these shining faces. Who- yes are, you know, pleading their appreciation to you. Uh, so that's going to be fun. I promise you in, uh, in a few weeks time, you're going to go, wow, it was all worth it. But uh, I have no doubt. And I'm not saying that this is not going to be worth it, but I have been, you know, hiking, you know, hard hikes every day, traveling two or three hours in the car to get uh, some height because I live in Phoenix and there's not a lot of, you know, there's some mountain stuff, but it's not enough height. So I'm worried about air. Right. Yes. Yes. Um, I, I'm not an outdoorsman. So buying boots, shoes, poles, hats, clothes, and, and like nothing is anything that I, I can't bring this t-shirt because no, it's not the right kind. Buddy, you look great. I can tell you're working hard and it's going to pay off. You'll be okay. grateful you did that because like I've said before, it's the elevation that gets people a lot. So that's good. You're getting above sea level, working yourself a little bit, getting a little sweat. That's all good. Okay. It's going to pay Is, dividends. Now, everybody goes, so are you bringing uh, like oxygen with you? So <laughs> uh, we're not doing that, no, right? No oxygen needed. No, no. We're Do not we need going- to get air pill? There's like some kind of oxygen pills or something I've heard. I don't have those. I think we'll be all right. Yeah, we'll be okay. The, the higher elevations are only going to be, we're only going to be there in the neighborhood of 24 hours. You know, you kind of peak it and then you kind of come down the other side. Okay. So, so we get to Poon Hill, we'll be there. We'll celebrate this amazing scenery and bring our great commission update family with us. I mean, yes. we're going to be there doing an interview right on the top of Poon Hill, looking at the Annapurna range in the Himalaya mountains. Okay. Let me, let me, pre- let me rehearse that. So yeah. Greg, we <laughs> are... At the, <laughs> here, oh, here's the other thing. So, you know, as we're recording this, everybody's freaking out about the coronavirus. Now, I'm Don't not a guy that like panics normally mm-hmm. on stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And but going on an airplane with hundreds of people, you can get sick anyway. So I go down to my Home Depot and I go, hey, where were the uh, air masks for paint off? Oh. <laughs> 
Yeah, we ain't got none. What do you mean we ain't gotten? Well, this guy came in the other day, uh, bought eight hundred dollars worth. Eight hundred dollars worth? How much are they? Uh, they're like thirty dollars. He bought eight hundred dollars worth. Wow. He said, "Yeah, good luck finding them anywhere." Well, come, come on. I called the Walmart. Yeah, some guy came in, bought all of them. I called the Ace Hardware. Yeah, some guy came in here, bought all. Of them. So some guy came into my test. Do you know it's the same guy? It, it most likely is. Uh, you know, I should go to, you know, uh, ma- face place. mask guy, eBay, and sure. find it. And they're probably going to be like $200 each. Well, it might do, be a good deal, man. Do, uh, you are know, you worried about that at all? I'm not worried. I'm not worried. We're, they said, you know, here's what I heard about the whole mask thing. They said the people that we want wearing the mask are those who are infected with the coronavirus, not those that aren't infected. That's that's what I heard. They said, yeah, you don't have to worry about it too much. Just keep your hands. So here's what you want. You want the hand sanitizer, which we'll have a lot of. That's the key. You want to keep your hands. Big because jug of that. They put it in, you know, that's, that's how they get it. So uh, we'll be good, though. I mean, it's not like Bangladesh borders where we'll be part of the time in China. But Nepal does border it, but it's separated by the mountains. So we got a nice buffer there. Oh, you're telling me a virus can't fly over a mountain? I mean, no. these things are looking to, they're, they're like drones no. looking to kill you. No. We're good, man. We are totally good. Right. We see no Chinese people on this hike, I promise you. So no good sweet and sour chicken. <laughs> Not up in the mountains. Okay, I was hoping they had a good Panda Express up there for that yeah, close to China. Sorry. We're Prob- going to miss out. Probably We're not. Out yeah. Um, so I, none of this, and I've traveled the world before. I've been to some pretty rough places, and you're just, <laughs> <laughs> no big deal. Everything's great. All right. Hey, so 20, what, 22 years I just finished as uh, CEO here at World Mission, and I probably have done, I don't know, three or four trips a year. So, you know, you're 65 plus trips. Uh, you know, you never have this attitude, been there, done that, right? Okay. But you kind of, you know, in the places that we work, right, at World Mission, you know, in the 1040 window, there, there's some dicey spots. I mean, to put it in context, and you've heard me tell you this before, Rusty, my very first mission trip with World Mission was in 1996. Back in 1996. Oh, come right. on. <laughs> Look at the grays. It's just, it's, uh, I don't have enough grays to, to have that testimony. But 1996, right? So I'm in Bosnia. I'm driving from Zagreb, Croatia, going to um, Sarajevo. And we were we we're rebuilding this orphanage that had been bombed during the first war, the Bosnian War. So my, the context of it is we're going there. And, you know, as you, you kind of stop and guys do, and you're, you're kind of in the, you know, more rural areas and we're taking a little bathroom break or something. And the translators are screaming at us, don't step off the road. A French peacekeeper did a couple weeks ago and stepped on a landmine. So that, that was my first trip with World Mission. So okay. I, since then, they've all gotten easier, Rusty. I so. mean, we're not going into a, I mean, the only place where I would think it would be a little dangerous in that way would be with the Rohingyas, right? I mean, because you're going to a refugee camp and yeah. it might be a little dicey there or no? Yeah, you know, there's going to be places that we're not going to be able to go into because, uh, you know, getting access to them is just, you, you can't do it. They don't want any Westerners going into areas. So we'll have to pick and choose areas that we go to, but we'll be with the whole Bangladesh staff, basically, and they'll be kind of picking and choosing the areas that we do go to. But anytime you're in an area like the Rohingya, and then also we're going to the Sheikh, uh, which is the largest unreached people group in the world. We've we've shared with our our listeners about them. 133 million people that are 0.0 percent Christian. We'll be with them too. So yeah. any anytime you're in an area that is that has that much Islamic dominance, you just have to be careful. Uh, you, you don't want to do high profile things. You know, you, we won't give you a megaphone to preach the gospel in the street corner. We won't be doing any of that kind of stuff. Um, so you just have, it's just low profile being wise, but, but, uh, it's, it, it's just such a great reminder of why these places exist in the world that mm-hmm. there's no Christian influence. You, you realize the magnitude of the barriers as you're in there. Uh, and it's, again, it's a great privilege, uh, to be a part of that kind yeah, of stuff. And, and for me to go, and I hope by you watching, you know, an idiot like me who has no idea what he's doing, uh, <laughs> give you kind of an idea of, of, you know, how difficult it is, what Greg does, how hard it is. I mean, it's taken, you know, I found out about this, I want to say late December. And so, I mean, I've been working out and trying to eat right and I don't know. 
thousands of dollars in equipment because I'm starting at, at zero. Um, man, it's hard. Yeah. And, yeah. and the, you know, part of it is I don't want to be the fat guy at the end of the trail. And everybody's going, oh, gosh. We'll pick we're him up on the We're back. waiting for that guy again. I don't want to be that guy. Because there's always one guy. He, I, you know, I've led a bunch of groups, Greg. I don't know if you know this, but if, if it ever works for you. But there's always one or two people that slow everybody down. And if there's not, it's probably you. Right. Here's, here's what you got going <laughs> for you, okay? Yeah. I, I told you, I can't tell you everything, right? right, right. So to, to ease your anxiety, uh, there's these trains that come along these paths that are donkey trains, Literally donkey trains. That's how they get the supplies. You say, how do you get supplies up to these super remote villages? By donkeys. Okay. And they got the thing hanging over their back. And on one side, they got a little pouch. And the other side, a pouch. And there's water jugs in one and food on the other. I've seen building materials. I've seen everything imaginable go on these donkeys. We always can jump on a donkey and hitch a ride if we need, hmm. if you need to. Okay. But you don't want to You don't want to be that guy either. Like, I'm the only guy in the group that was riding on a donkey. So, right. you know. I don't know if there's a huge benefit there, but we do have that as an out. Now, the yeah. other thing you told me right before the show was, well, we we have some other guys and we're thinking about, you know, taking a truck and going in a little bit further. Now, part of me is going, that sounds awesome. And then it's like, I've been doing all this work. Now I want to do it. <laughs> the highest elevation parts, all right? The highest elevation parts, we got to hike it. Okay. There, there's no other options except the donkey, but we're not doing that. Okay. Uh, but even there's parts of this trail that even the donkeys can't, I mean, you're like, you know, kind of climbing up a little tight stair. Is that the one where the stairs go for like two or three hours of just climbing stairs? That's pretty much it. Yep. Okay. Yep. That's, that's the area. Yeah. So you're not going to get gypped at all. This, all okay. this hard training, endurance training you've been doing is not for not. I promise you. Okay. I promise you. I'm kind of, I mean, Greg's obviously in good shape, but I'm kind of hoping to keep up with this guy. How old are you? No, no problem. I've been around the sun, uh, 50 times. I just okay. finished. Fifth, okay. So you're fit. So I've got four years on you and about 40 pounds. So <laughs> I'm going to keep up with you though. You're going to come back, buddy. A lean, mean Nepali fighting machine. Oh yeah. I'm ready. Yeah. We're in so, for a real, a real surprise. So one of the things that we're going to do is try, and I got to say the word try. Part of my job is I'm the technical guy and I am the cameraman and the internet guy. And my job is to kind of document. Everybody's going, so what are you doing? I'm, I have to tell everybody, I don't know. It's not my trip. I'm just a talking chimp. I do my dance. I go home. I'm just the guy documenting what's going on. Right. So my goal is to be able to do some stuff up there that I can post on YouTube. And then mm -hmm. our friends at the range are going to also take it and edit it and put it on the range, maybe together. It's a good goal. And most places have like an internet cafe, but video is really big. And mm -hmm. so it may be difficult. So if we miss a show or two, you're going to know that, Oh, they couldn't get an internet cafe that had enough bandwidth to get the show out. So it's not that we're slacking. Right. Um, but I don't know. What's your guess on that, Greg? I think when we're in the, so when we're at Kathmandu, so the beginning of it and the end of it, we'll be in Kathmandu. So we definitely can upload some stuff and get it to the range and get it uh, to uh, Great Commission update. Yep, absolutely. So we will have op opportunities. Not up in the mountains. You'll be surprised, though. The network that's up there is kind of crazy. I mean, where I can, like, text my wife or do a WhatsApp. I mean, it's you're like, really? Like, I'm, we're on top of a mountain here, and you can still do that? So network is almost everybody. But getting video downloaded, we'll have to wait till we get down to Kathmandu, one okay. of the great cities in the world. Um, so that'll be fun to even do that. Say, Hey, from Kathmandu, we're shooting this at you. So are we going to do any, I mean, here's my problem. I'm sitting here with, you know, you know, St. Greg here, Mr. Nicey, nice, good boy doing everything for Jesus. And I'm with him. <laughs> However, it's like, you know, like, for example, I talked about this the other day, and there's still a part of me. So when we're there, you know, we'll, we'll work, we'll have that all figured out. I mean, so. I'm, it's we'll, not like I'm out, you know, trying to pick up chicks and, and, and looking for the next, the, the, you know, the beer place. I don't drink or do drugs or anything like that. But it's like, 
do we get to do anything fun or is it all just blinders it, on bringing treasures up to people and that's it oh, oh man it's gonna be so much fun we have you know christians you know how it is we have lots of fun we we do all kinds of fun things man and on this trip we're gonna you know with the hiking we're gonna be with some amazing people so the indian guys i mean it's gonna be a lot about telling stories and encouraging each other uh stopping in villages eating some exotic food some great food uh seeing um I, i'll tell you this you know the first time i went there rusty i remember it was at Poon Hill, this in, this in the same area that we'll be at. And I remember the first time that I saw that that first panoramic view of the Annapurna Range, and I just started crying. I mean, it was just like it just like it's such an overwhelming just sense of God's creation and when what God you almost can feel like a them beating you know at you. I mean, it's just it's just a crazy overwhelming experience. So, awesome. and we're there in the time of the year that it's all super clear. Sometimes people go in what would be our summer months, June, July, and August, and they, they they tell me they're going, and I'm like, why are you doing that? They're like, well, you know, I have vacation then. I'm like, do you realize that's the monsoon season over there? Ooh. And more than likely, all of those uh, mountain, beautiful mountain ranges are going to be totally boxed in by clouds, and you're not going to see anything. Hmm. Really? And it's going to rain on you the whole time. <laughs> oh, have fun with that one. Well, I've been doing some, you know, looking at the weather because I, yeah, I'm at a point. Do I spend the three hundred dollars extra to get a coat that's small enough to fit, or do I not? And so far, what I'm finding is temperatures, sixties and seventies. Yeah, does that sound yeah. right? It does. I mean, around Kathmandu for sure, uh, and Pokhara, which is another main town we'll be in in Nepal. But once we get higher elevations, it'll get a bit chilly and that kind of thing. But but that's you're working not, out that makes you warmer, so that's good. No, you're you're climbing. Yeah. I got and by yeah. the way, uh the walking poles. Man, yeah. those are that's the you I know? never thought of those. Those are sweet. Love yeah, them. sure. Absolutely. Yeah. People people uh they keep you keep the balance. I mean, after you know, there's a certain all of us can do, you know, like, you know, hundred steps here and there. But I mean, when you're getting into thousands of steps. I mean, it doesn't take a lot, and you can hit a rock wrong or kind of lose your balance. So that's yeah. a that's a get ready. I do have a weak ankle, and that's I'm concerned about that. So I have got ace bandages. I got these boots. I got it all. I'm I'm the donkey train. I bro. don't want to take the donkey train. I'm no. I, let me take that back. I want to take the donkey train once for a little bit, just to say yeah. And then I rode a donkey. Taking a photo of Rusty on the donkey That'd for our audience so you can see what I'm talking about, all right? So I promise you we're going to get that photo, and you'll see it the next time. I almost got attacked by a donkey yesterday. Whoa! So I'm and over, I'm in Arizona, and there's a lake by my house, 10 minutes from my house, called Lake Pleasant. And there's some great hikes there. And I haven't, What's? it's one of those things where it's so close that you don't think about going there. Yeah. Right. I don't know if you have that where you are, but it's like Lake, Lake Superior. Okay. That's my, that's my example. Way it, too far away. How far is it? it well, I've got to go through the UP. So it's probably, it's like five hours. Oh no. I'm talking like 10 minutes. It's so oh, close. It's largest freshwater lake in the world. So yeah. I mean, this is like a bucket list for people, but yeah, you I get it. You never go. Right. Do I, well, once every other year. Okay. It, it's, that's a poke. Okay. So, but this Lake Pleasant is, it's like the only lake in the area anyway. So I went there yesterday and, um, I get out, I hear this sound. It's like, is somebody getting murdered or something? I don't know what it is. I go over there and there's this donkey and I'm guessing it's a female cause it's got little ones and it's like going to charge, you know, to stay away from the babies. Yeah. So that was pretty cool. Yes. Wow. And I went and pet him and I hugged him and yeah. no, I didn't. Well, here, I, I got to give you one last piece of advice. So yeah. the don't train, right? I've already said that. I'll tell this to you again, because this is information we don't want you to forget. Okay. When the donkey train's coming through on these hug trains, the, Hug the mountain. You remember. That's that's the best piece of information that you cannot forget. Okay. Uh, so when we hear the bells of announcing the donkey train is coming, we will all get up against the mountain and let them just pass through on their own because you don't want to be on the other side, on the edge side when the donkey train is coming through because they don't necessarily have good sense of, <laughs> of what could happen if they give you a little hip. Or bounce. they just don't care. 
They just don't care. They just they, don't they, care. They get a kick out of that, yeah. I hear the donkey train coming. It's coming around the bend. Okay, um, let's see. Anything else I'm trying to think of? Because, I, again, I'm trying to have everybody you know, be on this trip and understand all. I mean, look at this list. Look at this list. This is all stuff I got. I had to get. Is that yeah. all we sent you? Two pay- That's all we sent you? Two uh, 26, 38, I to 40, the wrong 42, 42 items. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. For, and then some of them have three or four things on it. Is there a face mask on there? Uh, I got one. Oxygen tank? No. You don't okay. Have an oxygen tank. Got you covered. We got you covered. Water filter, I got you covered. Okay, that one, that's good. I didn't get that. You wouldn't believe how, whatever you don't have, we got you covered, man. We got you covered. Why didn't you tell me that before I spent $1,000, $2,000? You can't get beyond this experience. You have to, you know, kind of take the whole thing in beginning to end uh, so you can really appreciate it. And here's one that's underwear, two sets maximum. (laughs) Now, now for 20 something days. (laughs) I don't want to go with us anywhere, Rusty. Don't share the whole list. I mean, it's like, is this going to be the stinky train? I mean, <laughs> two sets maximum. <laughs> well, we're there for two weeks. So, so a, you know, a pair a week? Well, yeah. While I you're mean, hiking 10 miles a day? I don't want to overkill. <laughs> Man, I mean. I didn't, know, I didn't know that was on there. Okay. That might, there might be. And missing like a, that might have needed to be an eight, maybe, and a, I don't. I don't. Okay, know. so now I don't know. I, I I went and got. I went and found. I didn't know they had these. They got hiking underwear. By the way, there tw- you go. twenty dollars a pair. I got two of them, and supposedly they're light, and then they dry quickly, so you can wash them fast. Those will come in handy. Everybody needs a pair of those. I mean, this is a blessing in disguise. You're just not seeing it at the moment, but just. Everything's going to be good. Now, you know man. what the Everything. blessing is? First of all, of course, just being there is is a blessing. And and I'm I am I'm I'm sharing with everybody exactly without any there's no filter right now. I've taken the filter off. You're getting Perfect. exactly how I'm feeling 3 days before we hit the the trail, okay? Um that's number 1. Number 2, so that's the blessing. Number 2, you know what? It's it's forcing me to get into shape. It's forcing me to do this. It's forcing me to get out of the house. So that's, that's right. good. So thank you for that too. Um, I'll oh, speak of thank yous, and then I'll let you talk. I've been talking the whole time, Greg. I'm sorry. Uh, this is beautiful. Okay. Um, so I want to thank, I, I know we've got some more people that have sent some money in, but I want to thank Pat Hickey mm. of uh, Peoria Ford and Surprise Ford, who's uh, who donated a, a bunch of treasures. Thank I, you, Pat. Uh, thank you, Pat. Also, Dr. Um, Lee Griffith and Olivia Hart Griffith. Uh, they've sent a check and uh, donated a bunch of treasures. I'm sure we've got some other people, but uh, we're going to, go up there and and say hey these are the treasures that pat and lee and olivia donated and i think they're all in my house right now awesome all the awesome. treasures uh, hey some of them you've already gotten them right that's what i'm saying i got them all the house i i, I was gonna bring the box in but i could yeah. barely pick it up wow now and now, now probably now probably your little sweet little uh helper uh, liberty did it with one arm but for me I'm, I swore when she shipped them, she had one on each shoulder when she was walking down the hallway. I'm like, what are those? They're rusty. I'm like, yeah, she's not funny, man. She's got it. Okay. That's, uh, yeah, I mean, it, you know, the fun thing about this, Rusty, is that these thank you so much. You know, we appreciate you. Uh, you know, you're not physically going with us, but, you know, Rusty and I get the privilege, you know, the, the fun side of it, of putting it into the hands. And so each one of these treasures that Rusty's talking about, they go uh, carefully uh, and you know, thoughtfully, and we identify. It's not random. There's nothing random about where these things go. It's right. really intentional. It's the people that they can't read. They're oral learners. That most of these people are going to be Hindu or they're going to be Muslim. Those are the areas that we'll be spending our time. And so, just think about that. I mean, someone's never had the opportunity to hear the gospel, to hear who Jesus is, and because of this treasure going into their hand, um, not only them but their family, and then you know, their friends, their neighbors going to impact so many people so it's, right. it's awesome and, and the reason that they did it while it's a, a i don't want to say pain in my hiney i mean it doesn't make it easy but it's it's because it's saving a lot of money i mean you get a certain amount of bags that you can do and if you go so if if greg carried all of them that box would go from being free to about four hundred dollars as yeah. opposed to sending it to me for twenty dollars and then i bring it with me yeah. Right. It's, that's that's the reason. Well, yeah. You know, for us, we try and the 50,000 treasures last year that we were able to distribute a, a lot of them 
um, end up just getting shipped directly from World Mission here because we don't have people going to Pakistan or Senegal or Indonesia um, or Iraq or wherever they're going to. So um, we have to send them in there. And that, that goes through the full arsenal of the customs and duties and all that. And a lot of times we're paying, you know, they get you pretty good. You know, you're really? paying five, six dollars a unit uh, in, in fees. But for us, you know, it's worth it. You know, I mean, for an extra five bucks, uh, you get that unit into the, in the hands of the people you need it to. But when anytime, you know, that adds up, too, because I mean, just you have right now, do I got to bring a whole bunch of cash now? No, no, no. We'll be good because when we bring them in. Uh, with our luggage, that's normally we can bypass the immigrations and customs. Sometimes okay. we'll pay a little bit, but it's largely being bypassed because you're taking it through the airport. Um, so that that definitely is a preferred way. But just the volume of units we send, we it's a small percentage of yeah. units we can take in that way. And the other thing that we're concerned about, and don't tell anybody, I'm still trying to figure this out. And this is just between us. Yeah. But I want to bring a drone, and I don't want to bring the drone for any nefarious reason other than just take some pretty pictures of some pretty awesome places. But there is some concern that some of these governments may not like the idea of me bringing a drone. Is that right? Well, in the, the area in Bangladesh, that is going to be the, the mainly Muslim area. So you've I mean, the, the concentration... I think I shared this with uh, our listeners uh, last week, but, you know, you've got Bangladesh is the size of Iowa, um, Iowa or Michigan, and so where you have 10 million people. Bangladesh, the same size, has 160 million people. Half the population of the United States. Yeah. So not only are you just in super concentrated, but on top of that, everywhere is mosques and Muslims. And you, have, you start flying drones over the top of mosques. And we're not going to see Rusty again. So we don't want to do that. That we would don't be cool, though. And I'm, I'm 100% on the people I've taken, I've brought home. So we can't break that record there. That's 22 years of hard work, Rusty. That's pretty good. And, and now, see, I have gotten myself into some situations. Yeah. I'm good at it. <laughs> it's a, it's a gift. On you. <laughs> now, I'm also good at getting myself out of them. Okay, well. But I'm good at getting into them. So. Probably should have told you before you bought the ticket, but well, I am telling you before we're getting on the plane. That's okay. I'm not going to jip you of any awesome experience and a fun, you know, here's how I got out of jail story to okay. our listener. I, I won't do that to you. So I, I might just let it play itself out. Okay. And, you know, when we need to call the U.S. Embassy. Um, and, that's uh, happened. Th then we'll do that. Right. right? I've but had in that. In the meantime, we're, we're going to. I mean, I'm the idiot that goes, you know what? I'm bored. I've been to Israel a few times. I'm kind of bored. Yeah. I want to meet a terrorist <laughs> and went and met with terrorists, which was a whole other story, but hopefully we won't have to do that this time. Not, we're going to bypass that one. Yeah. Um, not the list. We're, this is absolutely not what we were going to talk about on this program at all today, but we're running out of time. And, and I think, I don't know about you, Greg, but I think this is fascinating. Absolutely. All the stuff you have to go through to do this. And again, for Greg, you, you, I'm sure you've got all this equipment, all this stuff in the garage. You go, mm, let's go. You know what you're doing. And for me, it's been three months yes. of shopping and going, oh, I bought the socks. Oh, there's better socks. Okay, yeah. I'll buy those ones too. Oh, underwear is twenty dollars a pair. Oh, okay. I uh, here's one for today. Oh, I need a hood to go on my camera so I can have the camera go on my backpack. Oh, that was forty. Okay. Oh, wow, wow. Yeah. So this is Rusty's Christmas list, everyone, for 2020. Keep that. We'll keep uh, this that is 2020, 2021, 2022. <laughs> I've <laughs> taken care of birthdays. Got it all. <laughs> but you're going to have some pretty pictures. So yes, that's going to be yeah, great. Yeah. We'll um, bring it. If you would please, uh, you know, again, you're, you're hearing, I'm not, I am not calling Greg saying, Greg, I need you to buy this. Please buy me a camera. Buy me this. Buy me that. I'm not, that's not what those donations are for. Those donations are for getting those treasures mm -hmm. and getting them there. The treasures cost about $40, right, Greg? Yep, that's right. That's right. But, you know, when we when we deliver these things too, Rusty, it's not just a one to one ratio. So the people that are gathering around and listening, they do it in groups. And that's one of the beautiful things about these cultures, even though they're without a gospel witness, they're very community. They highly value community. So when you put a treasure in their presence, it, it's the group just naturally emerges. And so you'll have I mean, I've seen more than 20 people. I've, I've seen a Jimmy rigged. Uh, where you have a hundred people listening at a time. I mean, they they are just so creative with these, but it's always in a group setting. So 
one treasure, that, that 40 bucks is impacting uh, generally over 100 people by the time that thing's life cycle, uh, you know, after four or five years. Uh, so, I, I mean, it's just incredible how many people are gathering around listening. Yeah, I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to meet these folks. I can't wait to bring these uh, and personally hand deliver them. I can't wait to bring you along. Uh, I've got a lot of equipment, so we're going to have great video and pictures, and we're going to have all this stuff for you to check out. So if you would please go to worldmission.cc, worldmission.cc, and find out how you can donate. Greg, wrap it up for us, would yeah. you? A great commission update. And let's just the Jesus last words, go make disciples of all nations. So when, when Rusty and I were going to two countries, Bangladesh and Nepal, but we're going to see literally dozens of nations, so many of them without their first gospel witness. Um, so yeah, just be praying for us, but also share, encourage your friends, family, uh, join us on the great commission update, our podcast, watch it, listen to it, share it with their friends. Uh, we want to bring these stories of what Rusty and I are experiencing, what we're doing at World Mission, uh, because we just can't do it alone. We need you, and you're joining. You're there with us. And I would really encourage you to go to, uh, if you're watching this on Facebook or The Range, uh, subscribe, uh, mm -hmm. also the podcast, because I don't know when the next show's coming up. If you subscribe, YouTube will tell you. And so if you subscribe, you'll, you'll see some of these videos. Some of them may be a minute long. Some may be two, five, 20. I don't know, but it's going to be interesting. I'm not going to put up, you know, stupid, boring stuff. Um, it should be a lot of fun. So please subscribe so you don't miss it. Um, we'll try to have, we always try to put shows out on Tuesdays, but there's no plan. I, you know, the one thing I know in doing these and Greg, I know you're going to agree with this is, Take take the schedule and throw it out the window because you just have no idea what is going to happen, yep. right? That's right. Be flexible. Number mm -hmm. one lesson in missions. Number one. Be flexible. Well, so so is well, we're going to capture a ton of photos and videos that everybody's going to experience. <sighs> okay, and I'm I'm ready. I'm ready. And and oh, here's the other fun part, folks. I go from Phoenix to Philadelphia. Then from Philadelphia to Doha, and that's where we meet up, right? Yes, yes. Now, how here? Okay, everybody, how do you meet a guy in an airport where you don't know where nothing is and you don't speak the language? Uh, Greg, Greg, where are you? I mean, and you can't use I can't use a cell phone. Have you thought about that, or is that just you don't even think about that? All in English. What? So it's it's not, it's all in English. Gate number fifteen. I'll be there with bells and whistle, waiting for you, buddy. I will be there. I promise you. Okay. Yeah. You heard it, everybody. He promised. I believe him. I I believe him. Okay. <sighs> it's gonna be a great trip. Thank you so much, Greg. Thank you for allowing me to go with you, everybody. Thank you for supporting Greg and the great people at World Mission. Please donate. Go to worldmission.cc. And again, subscribe to the show because you don't want to miss this stuff from Bangladesh and mm. Kathmandu. You know, this is stuff that cities, it's like, do they really exist? They do, and we're going there. So, Greg, thank you so much, brother. We'll see you there, and we'll see you next week. Subscribe to the show. Thank you very much. I'm Rusty Embrace. He's Greg Kelly, and this is the Great Commission Update. Bye-bye.